Hi and welcome to the second part of the video lesson Win Easily. My name is Igor Smirnov, I'm an international grandmaster and chess coach. In this lesson we will keep talking about the simplest way for a win. More precisely, I'm going to show you how to beat attackers. You know, most of modern club players play in attacking style. And really sometimes it can be confusing and unpleasant for you. In the first part of this lesson, we discovered that a typical club player only can attack and use tactical tricks. Nonetheless, sometimes it can create serious problems for you. Really, it's simpler to attack than to defend. Attacker side just pushes his pieces forward and creates some threats, while defender has to solve difficult problems. In this lesson, I'll give you a few simple practical recommendations that will help you to feel alright against any aggressive opponent. Moreover, you will beat them easily and constantly. Ok, here we go. You already know the bottom line, we analyzed it in the previous lesson. You need to create a strategical position where your opponent has no direct attacking moves. In this case he will feel confused, he will don't know what to do and you will gain a victory easily. Now in this lesson I will show you the exact ways for getting such strategical situations. Here is the first way. Play closed positions. In the closed positions there are no possibilities for direct attacking moves. Usually there are no tactical tricks. Here both players need to show their positional understanding, and that's exactly what we're looking for. Here is the first example, e4, e6, d4, d5. A French defense leads to the closed positions with the pawn chains in the center. After that both players will need to find the right setup for his pieces and to compose the right plan. It's difficult to use any tactical tricks here at the early stage of game, and why it doesn't have any direct attacking moves here. And that's why such situation will be unpleasant for a taker player. A6, A3. I know that A3 is a theoretical move, and it was played many times already, but nevertheless, you see that this move doesn't do much. In an opening we should develop pieces while the, the idea of the move a3 is not so clear. You may wonder, but what about the black's move a6? There is a huge difference here. In the French defense black is going to attack on the queen side, and for this purpose he will play a6 and b5 and will develop his attack there. Therefore the black's move a6 helps black to realize his plan, while the white's move a3 is pretty useless actually. Ok, let's move on. Black took, then bishop c5. Here white played g3. Ok, white decided to develop his bishop on the g2 probably. Then I have a question. Where is the most active position of this bishop? On this diagonal f1, a6 or on the diagonal g2, e4? <laughs> well, I guess that on the initial position the bishop has more active position. On the g2, the bishop's activity will be restricted by the black central pawn chain. And also, it's hard to realize the logic between the moves a3 and g3. You see, white has a hard time of finding the right setup for, for his pieces, which is a typical for tactical attacker players. Ok, let's see what happened then. Queen b6, taking the knight, knight e4, knight c3. Queen c7. Here white played knight e2. Well, again this move looks a bit strange, so ok, if white played g3 on the previous move, now it would be more logical to play bishop g2 here instead of knight e2. And then make costly and finally finish development. I know knight e2 over protecting the d4 knight, but ok, it is not so crucial for white right now. So. Knight e2 is quite a bit logical, but nevertheless, why not to care about the all other pieces which are still standing on the first rank? Black made costly in bishop g2. Now after an exchange, black plays knight b6, aiming to the c4 square. 
Now white can feel the lack of a bishop on the right diagonal f1 a6 and he has to play b3, weakening his position even more. And now black can use the white's undeveloped position, making a breakthrough in the center. After f6, then e5, white has to take. Now queen takes e5, this is the force invariation. Now the e3 bishop being attacked, so queen d2 and rook takes f6. Now white has to pay for all his previous mistakes. Black is controlling the f-file, that's why white cannot make short castling. The long castling is also unavailable because black will capture the a3 pawn. By the way, you remember that white played a3 by himself, and this move was totally useless for him during the whole game, and right now it only creates problems for white. At the same time, the black's plan is pretty obvious. Black will play bishop g4, then rook e8, and will simply mate the white skin or will win a lot of material on the e-file. Although the white player is a grandmaster, you can see that strategical problems were too difficult for him. He wasn't able to create the right setup of the pieces, to compose the right plan, and lost the game pretty easily. And here is the second way for creating strategical positions. You should trade pieces. Well, this is pretty obvious, actually. The more pieces you trade, the less quantity of tactical possibilities your opponent will have. And here I'd like to make one important note. Please don't think that trading pieces will lead to a draw. Definitely not. Remember, you're playing against attacker. He will try to attack always, even in an endgame. He will try to mate your king, even if he doesn't have enough resources for that. In fact, such a taken player will just make mistakes, will weaken his position, and this is how he can win even a simple and equal endgame position. Ok, I hope this is pretty clear, so let's go to the next item. Next, while playing against attackers, you should create a strong center. Now I will show you what I mean by this item. Now let me show you why a strong center is so important when you play against attackers. We know a general rule which states that the central situation is the most important. If you have a strong center, then an opponent's flank attack will not be dangerous for you. Your center will control lots of squares on the chessboard. It's like your shield. And that's why it will be very difficult for your opponent to go forward and to go through this shield. At the same time, your opponent will try to attack anyway, just because he is an attacking player, but his attack will not be effective, and it will be rather time-wasting. That's why by using this shield of a strong center, you will feel comfortable, and your opponent will be doomed for unsuccessful attack. Ok, here white played h4, he's trying to attack anyway, and black replied g6. Usually it's very dangerous to move pawns when your opponent is attacking you. But in this position the black center is so strong that black even may make this move. An idea of the move g6 is to place the bishop on the f5 then, which will help black in his counterattack over the white's king. White played f6, bishop f8. By the way, you can see that even if white plays h5 and takes on the g6, black will recapture by the f-pawn and it will be still very difficult for white to create any real threats after that. Black always can play bishop f5, closing the f-file, and everything is well protected. In the game white played knight d2, trying to exchange the black's active knight. Also, by the way, you can see that it's very difficult for white to bring this b3 knight into the game and to bring it closer to his king side attack, just because there are no available central squares for his knight, thanks to the black's strong center. Ok, black played knight d6, knight f1, bishop f5, now black is developing his counter attack, he's attacking the c2 pawn, then knight c4, rook g2, d4, Ok, bishop e6, queen g3. You can see that during the whole game all the white's pieces are on the first ranks and it's very difficult for white to move them forward and to create any real threats for black. And this is all because of the black's strong center. 
Now white plays h5, this move doesn't create any problems for black, doesn't create any threats. e3, and then after knight e3 black has a force in win, because after queen c4, white is defenseless, he cannot pre prevent queen a2 mate. Here is the next advice. Use strategical openings. This is how you will start playing in the right style right from the first move of the game. Perhaps you are wondering what a strategical opening is. Now I will show you. By saying a strategical opening, I mean a situation when there is no contact between opponent's pieces at the early stage of game. If pieces do not attack each other, then there are no direct attacking possibilities and then there are no tactical ideas. We have seen such a situation in a French defense, for example. Both players mainly play on their own territory of the board, thus there are no direct attacking possibilities players should think about the strategical things, about the right setup of the pieces, correct plan, and so on. A similar situation happens in the classical variations of Rilo Pass. Both players do not try to attack each other at the early stage of game, they rather try to place their pieces on the good squares, strengthen their position and prepare a realization of their middle game plans. In contrast to Sicilian defense, for example, there is no real contact between whites and black pieces at the early stage of game. And that's good for us, because your opponent will not have any real tactical possibilities here. And here is my last advice concerning this topic. Use anti-blunders techniques. As we know, a typical club player can use different tactical tricks. This is one of his main weapons. That's why you should be careful. In order to prevent any sudden combinations from a side of your opponent, you should use special anti blunders techniques. I explained them in the free lesson How to Prevent Blunders. Here you can see the address of the webpage where you can get an access to this lesson. Even if you know this lesson already, I still recommend that you watch it again. It's very useful to study educational materials several times. Furthermore, I strongly recommend that you do it, because only this way helps you to digest and to remember the new information well. Now you can see all five methods together. They help you to create a strategical position where a positional understanding of a certain player matters the most. For lack of such understanding, your opponent will have a hard time and will don't know what to do. You will take away his weapons and he will become defenseless. This is how you can win lots of games without even doing something special. Ok, this is all that I wanted to tell you here. Thanks for your attention. As usual, you are welcome to leave your comments about this video on my blog. Talk to you in the next videos and have a good day. Goodbye.